Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, I'll be explaining how you should analyze your CAT mock test. Before I start uh, with uh, each section, that is verbal, LRDA and quant, I'll tell you why you should take CAT mocks and why you should analyze them. The way you should approach CAT mocks is not just looking at the score. How much you score in a CAT mock is not super important. What is important is, are you analyzing the mocks properly? Are you gaining anything by taking the mock? Are you figuring out what your weakness are, uh, what your strengths are? Those things are more important. So the way you approach a cat mock should also be in the spirit that you want to improve after taking the cat mock. You will get a better direction to how to continue with your cat preparation. That is the essence of taking cat mocks. If you're concentrating less on an important topic, you should use the cat mock, the diagnosis to figure out and change your strategy. That is the whole point of taking cat mocks. Cat mocks will also give you good idea and good understanding of how to manage your time better in the examination. Many times uh, when I interact with CAT aspirants, I feel that uh, some of the students who have a lot of potential fail to deliver in the actual examination. One of the key reasons is because they're not performing when it really counts, that is on the day of the examination. For you to get better sense of how to use your two hours, it is important for you to take as many CAT mocks as possible. Now just taking CAT mocks is not the uh, whole uh, point. You should also analyze them thoroughly. So I'll also tell you how you should analyze the three sections. Students who are enrolled to Kraku know that I take the verbal uh, section of every dash cat because I want to show people how I attempt my verbal section. So when I attempt a verbal section, I first solve two RCs. Then I go and attempt some verbal questions. I come back and I solve the third RC. I go back to the verbal section. I finish it and then I come back and solve the fourth RC. By the time I come to the fourth RC, I won't have a lot of time. This is basically the order in which I attempt the verbal ability section. Now when I'm analyzing my uh, attempt, I try to see a few things. I try to see whether my accuracy in RCs are good or whether my accuracy in verbal is good. Normally my accuracy in RCs is always better than my accuracy in verbal section. That is with para jumbles, para compressions and uh, para insertion. I don't tend to do very well. So that is something that I expect myself to do. In addition to it, when I attempt a mock section, I try to figure out whether my accuracy in all the RCs is good or whether the accuracy in the first RC is good or the second RC is good or uh, the last RC that I attempt when there is very little time is it good so again I get a good sense of what happened in the mock suppose my uh, accuracy in the first few RCs are wrong then it would basically tell me that uh, when the mock section started I was not able to concentrate properly if my accuracy in the last RC is wrong it would imply that I was not uh, focused or maybe there was time pressure. Similarly, with respect to verbal section, that is in para jumbles and para insertions, especially with para jumbles, I struggle a lot with accuracy. Now, recently I have identified that it is also a psych slightly psychological issue. One of the reasons that I identified because of which I underperform a lot in verbal section, that is in para jumbles, uh, identify the odd one out, is because I tend to take this verbal section slightly easy because I find reading comprehension to be very intensive. When I'm attempting an RC, I tend to focus completely on it. But when I attempt the verbal section in between RCs, I try to, so to say, chill out a little. So I'm not 100% invested in the question because of which my concentration also is slightly lesser and my accuracy also is definitely much lesser. So in one of the mock sections, I started feeling that, okay, instead of RCs, I'll give my 100% my mental focus on verbal section. And immediately my accuracy in the verbal section has definitely improved. It didn't go up very uh, high. It uh, Still my accuracy in RCs was higher than my accuracy in verbal attempt. But still, in verbal, my accuracy was not as bad as it used to be. So even this identifying of psychological attempt happened because I was analyzing why I was scoring poorly in verbal as compared to RC. There are certainly other things that I should do where I should focus more on uh, solving more para jumbles. I should also focus on solving out of context questions. So again, I know what I'm not doing well. This I get only when I analyze my mock attempts. This is as far as verbal is concerned. Now coming to LRDI. In LRDI, what I would say is the most important thing for you is identifying the set selection. So when you're analyzing your LRDI section attempt, what you should focus mostly on is not the score. Many times people miss out on one particular clue because of which they don't get a set correct. Many times they might make uh, a mistake in actually analyzing a clue. All of those things are fine because of which I would say your score in LRDI is not super important in a mock. In the actual examination, it is obviously very important, but in a mock, it is not super important. What is very important is whether you have selected the right set or not, because set selection is very, very important in LRDI. So what I would want you to do is when you're analyzing your LRDI section, look at the difficulty of all the four sets and try to see whether you attempted the easy sets or not. Because many times we think that a set is easy and we start attempting it, but we later realize that it is actually not easy. So that also is a very important skill. You have to figure out whether you selected the right sets or not. That is one of the most important conditions for you to do well in LRDI. So in LRDI, that is the only thing I would tell you when you're analyzing a uh, mock section, see whether you attempted the easy sets or not. Now, if you're looking at the quant section, in quant section, one of the important things is not just identifying your score, 
Suppose out of the 22 questions, you got say five or six questions correct. Don't worry too much about your score. What is more important is look at the questions that you got wrong. See if in any of the questions that you got wrong, you committed any silly mistake. And if you committed any silly mistake, please note it down in a notebook, the kind of silly mistake that you have committed. Because if you repeat the same type of mistakes many times, you should fix it. Some of my students tell me that uh, instead of, uh, they make simple multiplication mistakes. That is instead of say 6 into 8 is 48, they would write 6 into 8 is 36 or 64. So if you are repeating these kind of mistakes, if you observe a pattern, it will help you in correcting it. So all the silly mistakes should be noted down. Similarly, another thing in quant section, which is very important is, identifying whether you left any easy question. Many times people don't attempt the easy questions, which sometimes come towards the end of the section because they don't reach the end part of the section. So again, identifying whether there are any easy questions that you left out is a key thing when you're analyzing the quant section. One last thing, which is again equally important in the quant section is identifying the questions that you got correct, but you spent a long time in it. In the Krakow mocks, we give uh, in the analysis section, we give the average time taken by students who got the question correct. Now, you also know how much time you spent on each question in the analysis page. Try to see if there are any questions which you got wrong or whether you got correct, irrespective of your result, if you have spent a lot of time on it. Because this is one thing that many students do. They tend to waste a lot of time on one single question. At the end of the day, you should remember that all the 22 questions have equal weightage. Whether it is a difficult question or an easy question, the weightage is the same. Because of which the time you should spend also should remain the same. So if you are spending a lot of time on a few questions, because of which you are missing out on any easy questions towards the end, that is not a good strategy. This is how I would analyze each of the sections quant, LRDA and verbal. Apart from taking the mocks, I would also recommend you to check out our CAT revision playlist. We have made CAT revision playlist where we revise all the concepts for quant, LRDA and verbal. The quant videos are in two parts. Both of them combined will be around four hours, but they will give you thorough revision of all the important concepts for quant. For LRDA, the revision video is around one and a half hours long, but it will give you the basics and the kind of sets that can be expected in CAT, as well as how you should approach these LRDA sets. For verbal, it is around one hour long. It is a fantastic video where you will be given very good tips, especially in the verbal section. That is in para jumbles, how to approach them, how to identify the characters and out of uh, context questions. I've also made a couple of videos on my strategy and my tips for uh, the CAT students. The links for both of them are given below. One of them is how toppers uh, strategize to do well in CAT. And the other one is how you should feel confident and how you can increase your confidence when you're taking the examination. The links for both the videos are also given in the description. Do check it out. In addition to it, if you have any suggestions for uh, the videos that we should make in the future, or if you have any doubts with respect to your CAT preparation, please do let me know in the comments below. I look at all the comments and I'll try to help you out to the best of my ability.